Hello everyone, welcome to Divine Debut. Thank you for being here. Oh, it's been so amazing. Thank you so much. The views have been over the top. I am totally thrilled with the comments that I have been receiving. I am so humbled and so extremely happy at all of you and the way that you have been giving back the love that I've been giving to you so long. It's been almost three years. Almost three years and it's we've come a long way. I want to thank each and every one of you for your emails, your love, your kind words and I cannot stress that enough. Um, I feel as though I've received my Christmas presents already. Seriously, I'm so happy. Thank you, thank you. I would like to say that today is the 15th of November and as usual, I am running late. <laughs> this is like, it's past the stage of being silly and I know it's crazy, so Times have been crazy, you know, we've been through such hardship. This year has been really tough with Mars retrograding where it was for months, like it was, you know, in a difficult spot. The energy is just in general and I'm not going to go into the astrology at the beginning of the readings. I will put a small um, section, the end part of the video will be the astrology part for those of you that are interested can stay on and watch the rest of the video. For those astrology lovers out there, I will speak a little bit about that but not in the beginning of the video because there's a lot of people that want to watch the tarot. So it's the 15th today, 15th of November 2018 and these readings are Love in General for the mid-month to the end of the month okay, of November. I am going to be doing the extended readings instead of um, uploading them on Vimeo from now until Christmas I will be uploading these videos on YouTube um, just so you know this is me giving back to you I'm almost at 40,000 subscribers so thank you thank you so much again so there's going to be a part one, part two. The part one will be the divine spread, okay, with the hidden messages, the divine messages, and the karma dharma messages. Um, I will be taking one card from the Black Moon astrology cards, one or two, all right, for each sign in the first part. And I'm also using the um, Legacy of the Divine Tarot, which I have. It's a new deck and I'm so happy to use it on these readings, okay, by Ciro Marchetti. Now, all the rest of the cards that I'm using, I will put the list in the description box below. So, in the second part, which is the free second part of your reading, which as I said would normally be on Vimeo, you're getting it for free. And before I forget, I would like to wish Sagittarius a happy birthday, even though we're still in the time of Scorpio for a few more days. Happy birthday if it is your birthday and happy solar return. Happy birthday dear Sagittarius, it's your turn. The sun is coming into your sign and you are blessed by Jupiter, your ruler. So this is going to be a very special birthday for you. Um, again, thank you all for your love and your commitment to my channel. Okay, let's go on to the readings now. And um, please don't forget to share, to like, subscribe and comment. That keeps my channel going and it is very important. All right, so... Thank you again, part one, here we are. 
Hello dear Libra, welcome to Divine Debut. This is Kathy speaking. Thank you for being here. This is your mid-month of November till the end of November 2018 Love and General Reading. Um, this is the Divine Spread which I will be also extending with a second video for free. So yes it is a bit late, I do apologize, just it's been really really busy and you can only do so much so sorry to keep you waiting this is your message let's see your divine spread and what is happening with your karma dharma position okay we've got the death card which is scorpio some sort of a transformation you're going through. The Sun is still in Scorpio actually it's at 26 degrees. I also want to mention that in, a f um, in about six days we're going to have a Sun-Jupiter conjunction in Sagittarius so something is going to come to light, something is going to bless your lives. Jupiter is in its home sign of Sag the sun is clarity, it's warmth, it's it's love. Okay, so there is expansion. Sagittarius is the sign of optimism. The sun is optimism, fun. It sounds like it's a really, really good, really, really good transit. I'm so looking forward to that. Let's see what happens in seven days for all of us. The day before that, Neptune in Pisces is actually going direct, but it still will be in shadow. So those rose-colored glasses are coming off. Now, Mercury's retrograde. Venus has gone direct. It's still in Libra. Mercury's retrograde in Sag. So um, it's squaring off to Neptune. So be careful with communication, people. Let's take your cards. Okay, at the foundation, we've got the Nine of Pentacles. I'm using the um, Legacy of the Divine Tarot by Ciro Marchetti. If you want to know with the extended readings, so this is reading first part, you have to go to the extended free reading to see the second part. I'm using a lot more cards. They're all mentioned in the description box below. So if you're interested in what I'm using, um, they're all listed there. Let's see what's in the divine, I should say, sorry, in the hidden, hidden position, what you don't know. And we've got the two of coins. So there is some sort of a balancing, juggling act going on. Now in this um, deck, we've got someone who looks like the fool. In the recent past, we've got the magician. And this is the card of Mercury. So Mercury being retrograde, be careful, be careful, go over things again and again. It's a time for communication. It's a time for redirecting your energy inwards, not outwards. Now let's see in the um, recent, um, sorry, this is the recent position. This is the now position. We've got the Seven of Swords. Not one of my favorite cards. Let's see what your goal is and the crowning card is the King of Wands. Okay, so this is a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries or Leo. So the moon is actually in Aries as I am doing your reading. So yeah, we're all turning into the warriors, trying to begin something new. Emotionally, we're strong. So let's see what the advice and action to take is. And we've got the Lovers, which is the card of Gemini. Now Gemini is also, as well as Virgo, ruled by Mercury. So again, the Lovers is a number six. Let's see what the outcome card is. We've got the Four of Coins. I've had a couple more signs 
that had the four of coins as the outcome card. Interesting. Let's see what the divine position, what is happening planetarily for you. And we've got the fool. That's weird. Like I just said, the two of pentacles reminds me of the fool. Look at the similarities. Even though in the um, legacy tarot, the divine tarot, the fool looks a little bit different. He's um, well out of this world. He's very Aquarian, even though it is the card of Aries. And when I say very Aquarian, because Aquarius is out of this world, they're, you know, they are the ethers, they're, they're um, ruled by Uranus, which is far out, far, far away. <laughs> Let's take a Black Moon Astrology card. Now, the Fool is a new journey. It's, you know, beginning something new. It's also beginning a new adventure, especially with Jupiter and Sag. Okay, spirit guides and angels, what other message do I have for Libra? What do they need to know? Libra, mid-November until end of November. And this is the card. We've got Chiron, which is healing. Now, Chiron is the centaur. Okay, it's not actually a planet, it's a um, it's an asteroid. It's it, it's actually at the last degrees of Pisces. Now Chiron was the wounded healer and uh, Chiron was wounded by his own people, so he spent all his life trying to heal himself and um through that, he actually became the healer. He got the experience, so he was able to heal others. Now, it is a number eight. Eight is the house of Scorpio. And eight is also the number of the strength card. So, having number eight, which is Scorpio, and we've got Scorpio here as well, could this be the time of healing? Now, through death, death and transformation, there is some sort of a change coming through. Now, Chiron is still retrograding in Pisces. He was in Aries and recently retrograded back into Pisces. Now, Pisces is the last sign of the Zodiac. So it's as though Chiron has gone back um, back in time, back to his childhood, let's say. This could be you taking on the persona of Chiron. So going back to redo things because retrogrades always speak of redoing things. Now we've got this beautiful, beautiful water trine. And when I say water trine, I mean there's a triangle in the sky, okay, triangle where it's connected through trines which are very beneficial very beautiful flowing energy having the trine in water. Now Chiron is connected to the North Node which is in Cancer. It just recently moved from Leo into Cancer and Cancer is the home, it's the family, it's your roots, your foundation as well as your parents. Um, and the North Node is also what we are fated in life, in this life to move towards. As well as that, it's also the North Node is trining over to the Sun in Scorpio. And we've got Scorpio here. Scorpio speaks of transformation, other people's money, um, sexual intimacy, things that have been hidden. Now with the Sun finishing up in Scorpio, I believe that things are the last things that the Sun and Jupiter had been bringing up to air, I think there is going to be clarity coming through but I feel as though it's going to be good in the sense that the Sun is very close 
is at 26 degrees, almost 27 of Scorpio, and Jupiter is at 2 degrees of Sagittarius. So they're really, they're conjunct right now, but they're coming closer and closer together. So I think that this week is going to be a beautiful energy. We've got Libra, we've got Venus in Libra. Venus in a few days um, actually in two weeks, almost two weeks, we'll be moving into Scorpio. She's still covering her shadow period, so still dealing with things that she started to retrograde and want to work on, anything to do with money, love, projects, anything that is of value to us. So I remember your last reading was amazing, it really was. So some of you are still going through that transformation. Having the full card here is wondrous. I love it here because the uh, divine is putting you on a new journey. So when we've got a brand new journey, a beginning, it means that something has come to an end. Something that was not for you, you're closing the door on. Okay, what I wanted to say was that when we have a grand trine, especially in water, water is very sensitive. It can be very psychic. The water signs are the most psychic signs in the zodiac. When we've got a water trine now, very, very, very watery, right? Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, so intuitive. We've got really strong intuition now. And if you're actually born with a water trine in your chart, it's a blessing. And it says that you can deal with this energy even better. Okay, so a beautiful time right now, I'm going to say. Let's see what the reading is all about. Now at the foundation, we've got the Nine of Pentacles. And this for me is the energy of Virgo. Could some of you be on the cusp with Virgo? Could some of you have strong Virgo in your chart? Yes or no, it doesn't really matter. The Nine of Pentacles always speaks of financial abundance, being independently standing on our own two feet, like we can be by ourselves, let's say, if we've got this card. But, you know, financially you're okay, but we always need more in our life than just finances. So you may have been concentrating on work. Now with Venus in Libra, it is a time of trying to find the balance within relationships, partnerships, whatever relationships they are, family. Libra is the other people, right? And Aries is me, it's myself. So at this time with the moon in Aries and Venus in Libra, you know, we're fighting for what we want emotionally, but we also have to try and fit others into our life as well and whatever we're doing. So in the hidden position, we've got the two of pentacles. Now twos always speak of balance. You may be you may be really busy or you're getting busier. If this is business, um, there is more to do. There is a lot to do. Some of you may be dealing with another earth sign. Um which is very focused on their money, very focused on manifesting. And we've got the magician right above. And the magician is all about manifestation, right? So the magician is communication. It's having everything that you need to make the magic to complete whatever um, you're hoping to bring in, to draw in. Now the fool is here, the magician is here. So the magician is, you're at the magician before the fool. So that's a bit of a funny sort of a going backwards, very retrograde energy. But with this card here, and I'm not reading reversals, um, you may have been dealing with someone who is a trickster. And why do I say that? Because we've got the seven of swords. Whether it is someone who's a trickster, now as I say always with the tarot, there's a lot of messages. So the magician can be you having everything you need because you've got the nine of pentacles here. 
you can make the magic. And dear Libra, having Venus in your sign is, you know, a fantastic time where you can, <coughs> excuse me, you can actually, you can be the spokesperson, the person that's going to get through whatever, whatever is going on. I mean, you're at the time of, with the help of Venus, because Venus is harmony, okay? She's harmony, she's beauty. You've got the gift of the gap. You've got the gift in general that you can bring peace into situations because you are all about the balance. So you may be dealing with someone who's been a little bit, you know, tricky. Um, they may not be very open with you. Now, they could be holding back. They could also be holding back and trying to manipulate you. And not, I don't feel like it's in a bad way. Um, it could be manipulation for something that, that's very important to them. Now, if this is business, it's all about money. That's what the manipulation is all about. There are different stages of man manipulation. Sometimes it can be really hard and other times... It's, you know, um, very minor. So manipulation is when we want someone to get something, to do something for us. Like we'll say, hey, what are you doing? You know, I would love it if you would do this for me. I will do this for you. You can do that for me. And that's manipulation. But it's not on an unhealthy level. So the Seven of Swords, Seven's always, to me, especially in the Rider Waite Tarot, it's someone that is trying to intellectually get away from trouble. Someone who's trying to be intelligent. So they sweet talk you, let's say, and this could be your energy as well. Sweet talking someone and trying to keep away from, you know, if you look at the right away card, he's holding those five swords and that's five of swords is an imbalance. It's doing battle. Um... So he's running away with those five swords and leaving the other two behind. Now those two swords that are behind, left behind, could be a decision. They're trying to get away from making some sort of a decision, a choice. As I said, this could be you or the person that you're dealing with. Now the funny thing here is that I have noticed... Right there, we've got the sign of Aquarius. Could you be dealing with an Aquarian person, someone who's got strong Aquarius? Um, and I did mention Uranus here, which is the ruler of Aquarius. Could you be dealing with someone who's got Aquarius? Now, because we've got the King of Wands here, it's funny because I feel that there is fixed energy here. And why do I say that? Because we've got the sign of Aquarian here. We've got the King of Wands, which I feel is, could be a Leo, okay, because the nodes were there. Aquarius was South Node. The North Node was Leo that's moved into now Cancer. And the South Node has moved into um, Capricorn. So we've got Aquarius, let's say Leo here. And the nodes having the nodes have changed, as I said. Now the other two fixed signs, um, I said I, f I feel fixed energy. The other two fixed signs, because we've got Scorpio here, and with this card here, I feel the energy of Taurus with the four of Pentacles, because they're very, you know, they try so hard for their um, home, they try for their comforts, they work very hard and, you know, they like to have valuable things. Valuables are very important to Taurus. So um, if this is not someone holding back on their money and their finances, then they're holding back on their feelings. Now, the King of Wands is usually someone who is very spontaneous, very open with their feelings, they're quite fiery, but Mars 
Mars, which is our passion, it's our life force pushing forth. It's our life, right? Without fire, there is no life. Mars has plunged into Pisces, so it feels as though the fire has been put out. Pisces is a water sign. The fire, you know, the fire that was burning, has has left us for a while, and it's going to be there until the end of December. Um, no, hold on, let me think. Yes, it's going to be um, moving into Aries on the 31st of December. So that's when we're all going to get our mojo and our fire back. Now, Mars is going direct, but it's very murky in, in Pisces. So here we've got the lovers. So I feel that with the King of Wands, there isn't a lot of... Um, Uh, spontaneity, fire, and even creativity. I'm going to say that it's not a time of strong passion now here. So the lovers here could be a decision. We've got the lovers here. We've got the two of pentacles here, and we've also got the two of swords that I mentioned here. So the lovers is a karmic relationship the lovers always is karma and um, the lovers is a number six which speaks of balance here in this card we've got two people that look different but they're two halves to a whole they're not identical twins which goes to show that Gemini is the twin right goes to show that there is a difference between you but we find many times that we even with a twin flame we can be two very different people that come together okay they do fit each other like a glove so what is missing from one person the other person has the partner has now this could be business partnership doesn't mean because it's the lovers that it's uh, only we're talking about love So um, what I want to say, and I wanted to say this before, is that Chiron, the wounded healer, is a centaur. Now, Sagittarius is also a centaur, which is half man, half horse. And Jupiter is there. The sun is about to move into Sagittarius. So, you know, Sagittarius is foreign places and people, people at a distance. It's higher education. It's becoming the guru, the teacher, um, being the student. It's also about, you know, having an adventure. And it's all about truth as well. Now, with the truth can come, wounds can come up. Now, this Chiron here would speak, obviously, if you don't believe in a previous life, in reincarnation, then maybe something is coming up and in relation to your childhood with the North Node being in Cancer, which is family. Cancer is the child. So whatever is coming up, that will be healed. And for those of you that do believe in reincarnation, this could be something coming back from a previous life. We're still in retrograde. Um, Mercury is still retrograde. Venus is still in Libra, in her shadow. And she still has to go through Scorpio which is dark and mystical and hidden, right? So four of pentacles, holding on to your finances. Even though you've got the magician here, something has happened here. You're going through some sort of a transformation. And I'm still trying to figure out what that is. Now, I said this could be Leo. It could also be, I'm going to say, Aries or even Sag, because we've got the Fool here. So we could be talking about making a choice between two people as well. Easy. Of course, we've got the Two of Coins in the hidden position, which could be you're juggling with two people. Now we've got Scorpio here, so it is a strong position. It's Karma Dharma. Uh, position 
I think that whoever you're dealing with, they will have 100%. They will have strong Scorpio. But this could also mean when Venus moves into Scorpio, which is on the 6th of December, and that's just around the corner, in two weeks. So the divine position is beautiful with a fool. This is taking a risk. And fours always speak of our home and family, our foundation. Some of you may be making magic um, and your finances are good enough. You may also be wanting to move. You've been saving up your pennies and you look as though you're at the point where you can actually do something about that. You're ready to build a foundation. Now, if we look at the 9 and the 4, that's 13. 13 is Scorpio. Um, the energy, It's the card of Scorpio. Um, and 13 breaks down to a 4, which is, again, the home. If we look at these pentacles here as well, add them all together, 13 and 2 is 15, which is Capricorn, putting in that hard work. That's where the south node is. So... Dear Libra, is it time to actually change your focus, look at your foundation, your family, your marriage, if you are in a committed partnership and or relationship? Is it time to stop focusing only on career and looking at what is happening in your family life? Sometimes we tend to focus on one thing and we, you know, then we suffer the consequences. If you're focusing only on work, because the devil is, you know, it's Saturn, it's putting in that hard work, it's the house of career, and actually Pluto is there, which will bring in the transformation. Others of you may be becoming the leader. You may be transforming and becoming the authority within your own life. And that's where the transformation could be uh, happening. Okay, well, I just wanted to mention that below the full here, we've got the hourglass and the time, yeah, Chrono Saturn is the timekeeper. So some of you, for each and every one of you, the beginning of the cycle is not going to be the same depending on what your birth chart says. We've got the hourglass, so for some of you it may take, you know, even up to seven weeks for you to start something, you know, start this new journey. And I'm saying seven because I feel that what you're actually manifesting and doing, you're not telling the whole world about it. Now, with that fixed energy that I said, the Grand Cross, which is where the North Node was, Leo, Aquarius, um, Scorpio, Taurus. We did have a Grand Cross not so recently, not so long ago, sorry, not so long ago. Maybe it's, it could be three weeks. I don't know exactly when it was happening, but maybe that's where that time was an important time for you. And you know, you know that, fixed grand crosses are very difficult energy so that's probably why we've got Chiron and healing here so you may be going through a cycle of trying to heal I want to say that if you're dealing with a Scorpio they are very fiery and very passionate Okay, because they're co-ruled with um, by Aries. Okay, they are co-ruled by Aries. So they're the most passionate and fiery water sign of all. So I suppose the Scorpio could be the same person as the King of Wands. Now I'm going to say if you're single, I would say more than likely we've got Scorpio and the King of Wands any other fire sign so you know I'll leave I'll leave that up to you if you're a female please watch your Venus if you're a male go and watch your Mars 
and don't forget to watch your moon and rising signs as well for more information. So I'm going to leave this reading at that. I'm going on to the part two right now. Let's see what else we have. You know that my readings do take a, a twist. They have a major turn sometimes in the extended reading because I take so many cards. So thank you so much for liking, sharing, subscribing and commenting. You are appreciated. I do read all the comments. Thank you so much for the support that you've given me. The views on your last videos were amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, so I will see you on the extended part. Now, for those of you that are astrology lovers, stay on for the astrology part on this video. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, for you astrology lovers, a little bit on that. Um, okay, so November 15th. We've actually got Mars that enters into Pisces. Wow, interesting, eh? After so long that Mars has been Mars has been in Aquarius, like I don't know, for four or five months, and that's incredible. Finally, um, the Martian, <laughs> which is full of fire and passion, and um, you know, the driving force, it's our force, it's our will, it's our energy. It actually moves into Pisces, Mars does, which Mars is the ruler of Aries, right? So Aries, uh, it, Mars is nearly at home. When it moves into Aries, it will be in its home sign. So Mars has been through a lot of difficulty through Aquarius because it went through, you know, it was on the south node, it went through difficult squares with um, Uranus. It was at a very, very difficult time uh, in its in its uh, transit, and it's happy because it's happier than being in Aquarius. Because you know, Aquarius is an air sign, so fire and air um, do mean explosion. You know, look at the worldly news. Look at what's happened in the past four or five months. Look at your own personal life. Like on the collective front, it's been really hard for people. As well as that, you know, on our own lives, in our own lives, it's been like really, really tough. It's like there's been a lot of trouble, a lot of changes happening. Um, people have had like one day good, the next day it's like downhill. Um, I see it in, you know, people that are around me in their lives. Same with me. I mean, we're all going through the same energies. So Mars, as I said, moving into Pisces. Pisces is a water sign. So Mars slows down there. It's like putting something that's on fire, um, let's say a torch, Put it in water. It's like putting out the fire. There is no, it's difficult to move through because Pisces is murky. It's like watery. It's unclear. It's very loving. Of course, Pisces has got a lot of love to give. It's the divine love. But Mars being there, it's like its energy is slowed down. It's like taking a break. It's as though it's taken drugs. Mars has taken drugs. It's drugged out and it's like going with the flow. It's lost its energy though. Think about it. Um, what else? Okay. Let's see what's next. Uh, we've got Venus direct on the 16th of November. Don't forget, she's still in her shadow period. Even though it's all systems go, she's actually moving over the degrees. She's at 25 degrees, right? When, when she goes direct. She's at 25 degrees and she's still in Libra, which is her own home. So she's very happy there. She's very happy to move direct too. So from 25 degrees... She will be slowly and not not long to go before she moves into <clears throat> sorry into Scorpio, and that will be in two and a half weeks. 
so yeah she once she gets to the 10 degrees of Scorpio that will be when her shadow period ends so it is all systems go but she's still sort of go it's as though she's working on the last details of you know we're working on the last last details of what we perceive as you know something that is adorable beautiful something that we love anything that is of value to us anything to do with love money love and money and our value system so very positive that she's moving direct it's great and being in Libra it's the house of partnership so we are still talking about uh, finding our balance we're hoping to find our balance we're going to be able to be just like Libra um, trying to find the balance and being there for others because Libra is other people it's it's the house of partnership right whether it's family business or romance now the at this on the same day like tomorrow Mercury goes retrograde so it's like Venus um, finishes Mercury begins so we're not at the end of the retrograde season um, now Mercury is not such a tragic um, retrograde Mercury goes retrograde three or four times every year it's just that Mercury deals with communications right Commun anything to do with communicating third house matters uh, which is siblings um, neighbors friends being in a small group um, anything to do with study as well um, so anything electronic anything that is driven anything that you sit in and you drive it be careful there may be breakdowns be careful with looking at the details you need to look over details again and again with mercury retrograde because if you are let's say traveling you've got you know your flight um, your itinerary look over the details because there is a big chance that there is some sort of a mistake there could be delays there could be cancellations what have you now mercury is in Sagittarius Sagittarius is the it's the house of higher education uh, Mercury is ruled by its the house opposite Sag which is Gemini right so little Mercury being in huge Gemini because uh, in huge Sagittarius Sagittarius being ruled by Ju by Jupiter is grand it's big it's enormous you know so little Mercury in there moving retrograde is going to be going through some difficult aspects with Neptune at the moment actually in the next week we've got a difficult uh, square between Mercury and um, Neptune um, and that speaks of confusion so yeah be careful be careful with com being confused and uh, Neptune is in Pisces it's very strong even though it's retrograde and we're, we're wearing rose-colored glasses I already feel the confusion the past couple of days so the next week still the same be careful with your details be careful with communications and not misunderstanding um, and try and stay alert keep that left brain working um, do not go into disillusion and illusions with Neptune in Pisces can happen <laughs> now on the um, 22nd of November the Sun will enter Sagittarius what a beautiful time happy birthday Sagittarius right happy happy birthday I was so happy to give you the best reading in the whole world <laughs> so happy to do that for you so the Sun in Sagittarius there's a lot of optimism my god there is a lot of clarity what is the Sun the Sun is the ruler of Leo it's as I said before it's grand um, and when the Sun meets up with Jupiter which won't be long let me see um, uh, okay so in 1.6 weeks 
So in about 10 days, the sun is conjunct Jupiter in Sagittarius. My God, wishes coming true. Anything to do with Sagittarius, which is foreign places, foreign cultures, higher education, spirituality, um, truth, um, freedom, exploration, exploring, going on that adventure. Um, it's a time to go on an adventure. It's a time to travel. Now with Mercury retrograde, know that it only lasts for about three weeks. So um, it does not take long. It's actually like three weeks, but then it will be in shadow just for a bit. Let's say I will tell you when it will be going direct. So in three weeks, which will be December the 7th, Mercury will be going direct. Um, yeah. So things will be back to normal. And that's fantastic. So communications, everything will come back to normal. Um, Venus will be out of its shadow by then it will be in Scorpio so still deep deep Scorpio hidden stuff um, but that is death and still death and transformation but in a very positive way because Venus will be direct so anything to do with intimacy as well very you know Scorpio uh, rules the sexual organs this is like sex on fire sex on leg um, how do we say it sex on legs yeah so now, 23rd of November, which is, 23rd is like 11. If you break it down, it's a number 11. Again, it's in the 11th month of the 11th year. So I'm saying that the full moon in Gemini, at the beginning of Gemini, um, is going to be amazing. Now, Gemini is all about, it's ruled by Mercury. Gemini is an air sign. So it's all about our intellect. It's all about uh, communication writing, reading, studying, uh, siblings, neighbors, um, education, as well as short distance travel. Full moon is a completion, right? It's clarity. It's like an illumination. So with completions come new beginnings, correct? So it's at zero degrees and 52 of Gemini, which is, it's actually on the cusp with Taurus. Now, the last full moon was in Taurus. Taurus is all about our values, uh, what is near and dear to us, what we value. What you know, It's all about the comforts in our life. Taurus is very, it's earth. So it's all about putting in that hard work because it's the house of earned income. So working hard towards things that make you feel comfortable, right? So being right on the cusp um, of Taurus Gemini, it's all about the things that I just mentioned, like, you know, anything to do with communication. Uh, also, publicity, like publishing uh, a book, anything that's been written, you know. I think that people are going to look at uh, this time as very important because as I said Gemini is logic Gemini is the left brain it's a very intellectual sign so our intellect will be very very important uh, at this time and anything that deals with um, that left brain logic anything to do with logic all right 24th of November Neptune goes direct so we've got so many things happening. Neptune direct, those rose-colored glasses are coming off. Neptune is in Pisces. It's at 13 degrees, almost 14 degrees of Pisces. So moving direct, Pisces is the divine love. Pisces is the completion of a cycle. It's the last sign of the zodiac. Now Pisces is also... A water sign so as I said uh, with Neptune moving direct even though it's a Pisces is also it's a very dark 
house. It's the occult. It's things that are hidden. The positive thing with Neptune moving direct is that those glasses will come off. We will be able to see through the veil. So anything that has been disillusioning for you, if you've been stuck in an illusion, if you've been drugging yourself out because the energies have been so difficult, it's actually time to cut down on those drugs, uh, see things clearly, right, and just go with the flow because Pisces is the, it's, as I said, it's the divine love. It's giving everything giving everything to the world and I think that it is time for with Neptune moving direct and in 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 its own home sign we've got Jupiter direct in its home sign we've got we've got um, Venus at that stage obviously direct in its home sign still um, this is like incredible. It really is. Now the moon, while I'm doing this, is in Aquarius. Aquarius is the rebel. The moon is our emotions. Um, so not being so emotional, I would say, because Aquarius is like, you know, they break down, they rebel against things that don't work for them, right? So with the moon moving through Aquarius, it's like detaching from our emotions. It's like using again our um, our intellect because all air signs are intellectual more than what our heart space is. So it's detaching from anything that is difficult emotionally. Now the moon is also home. It's it's our mother as well. So this is like. Um, detaching, like cutting that umbilical cord, I would say, and breaking free from anything that has been um, tying you, holding you hostage to some sort of an, an obligation, could be a family obligation, could be anything to do with home, your roots, anything like that. So what have I not mentioned So I can finish the astrology part of this reading. Okay, well, Pluto is direct in Capricorn at 19 degrees. Saturn is at 6 degrees. It's starting to get closer and closer to uh, Pluto. Saturn, of course, is very strong. Yeah, I didn't mention that. Saturn is in its own home so sign of Capricorn. Very, very strong. And with the nodes having shifted... Um, into Cancer, Capricorn. Um, Cancer is the North Node. South Node is in Capricorn. It's a very Capricornian time for the next year and a half. Now, Cancer is the home, the family, the roots, the mother. Capricorn is our status in the world. It's being the authority. It's putting in that hard work, standing strong, becoming the elder. So that's the axis we, we will be working through this is our soul's purpose for the next 18 months anything to do with career which is capricorn and home which is cancer so i think i will leave it at that uh, when i have time i will upload more astrology on vimeo i will let you know about it i'm really struggling with time at the moment the only thing that i did not mention is that the sun is still at 22 degrees of Scorpio it's finishing up its cycle in Scorpio and it will be moving into Sag right very soon as well as Chiron at 28 degrees of Pisces it's still in its retrograde mode so Chiron is the wounded healer it's going back trying to find a way to heal and end end a chapter of anything to do with past life wounds, childhood wounds, and Chiron being the wounded healer. Um, some of us are licking our wounds, trying to heal them, and in the process we are becoming the healers. Now when Chiron moves back into Aries, this is a sign of the initiation. This is a brand new sign, a brand new cycle, and so 
So um, we will be instigating healing, okay, healing through crisis, healing and becoming the warrior, pushing the energies through to bring on that healing or to become that healer. Did I mention Uranus at 29 degrees of Aries? Again, very explosive, okay, very, very explosive. Now, one last thing that I wanted to say was that Mars, which will be moving into Pisces, Mars is the ruler of Aries, right? Um, and Uranus being in Aries, it's like Uranus rules Aquarius. So it's funny, you know, having, um, having Mars in Aquarius at the last degrees, it's like it's as though they've swapped positions. So instead of Mars being where Uranus is, Uranus is where Mars would be and so on and so forth. So this is a very interesting time because there is a sextile between the two, all right? And this is very interesting because it's very important when this happens. All right, so um, I think I will leave you at that. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for liking, sharing and subscribing, sending you many wishes and many blessings. Stay well, stay blessed. Bye.